lovely so this is going to be one of my longer videos i want to give you guys an update i haven't done video in ages i've just been dreading doing this video so i'm going to try my very best because you guys deserve to know what's going on and get updated so that you aren't worrying and wondering what's going on with me and if i'm okay and um i'm not very good at talking about things like this so i'm just going to try my very best so um the past couple weeks my grandmother had been very ill and um it was very difficult because um I had been going through all my surgeries and everything so I didn't really get to see her that much um but she got moved closer to where we are and um I started to go over there um just last week and she just was not doing well and um I don't know for those of you that are spiritual or religious or whatever you want to call it but I am religious and I get very um I've said this before in some of my videos like I'm never one of those people that's like God give me a sign like God is very like straightforward with me and um he very much like put it on my heart that my grandmother was not well like really not well and because this has happened before this happened with my grandfather he was really sick and in hospice two years ago and um he came out and he was doing great after that so um but my grandmother came back and was in hospice and was not doing great and um so my mom had just been doing a fantastic job of taking care of everything and getting everybody moved all around and um on um last week I just felt very strongly when I was there that they needed to stay there longer and they had started giving her morphine and um I remember I came back and I, t I walked in and my dad always wants to know how everything went and I said she's not going to make it through the night and um so she didn't and we got a call very very late at night and we went over and um that happened and um so what was I guess the most hard part was um seeing my grandfather was her because they had just celebrated their 63rd wedding anniversary and um I'm sorry And, um, my grandfather is 94 years old, so this is his worst nightmare. He never wanted to be the one that was here and hurt for her to pass. So, that's really heartbreaking seeing her and him with her. And, um, and for my mom, um, I just, like, she's strong for me and I'm trying to be strong for her and in the mix I don't really know how she's doing and um I don't like talking about this stuff I don't like thinking about it and I just want it to be over and I want time to pass and because my grandmother and I weren't like best friends like she didn't help raise me I you know I don't have a connection a lot of people do with their grandparents but the hard part for me was seeing her in such distress and um, my my parents are older and I just kept thinking like how am I gonna do this for my parents and um and then, um, this is my first time, like, seeing a person that has passed. So, it's the first.
first thing I think about when I wake up is just those images and um and I don't really want to talk to anybody about it everybody's been really amazing and supportive and sending prayers and condolences and things like that but it's just you know time just needs to pass to get over those types of things and I don't know if I'll ever get over it but I just so wanted to be there for my mom and to do what I felt was right for my grandmother but I don't know if it was necessarily the right thing for me to do because um I'm like my dad I just don't deal with things like that and uh we are very blessed in so many ways um you know we got to spend time with her that we were there hours before she passed um that we got to say goodbye that it wasn't really awful you know we had just started giving her advan and then that day we had just started giving her morphine and um at really low doses just because she was showing a little bit of agitation so really blessed in a lot of ways and um, but then right pretty much a, a day after my grand, my dad had to drive back to North Carolina, um, and so it's really hard for us all to be apart, and then my mom and I are kind of stranded here, and after visiting my grandmother and then this stress, I've just been so sick. Um, probably about as sick as I've been fibro sick, um, for a really long time. I can't remember the last time I've been this fibro sick. Um, um, but, so, that aside, um, I got a very interesting comment because evidently when I don't message my comments people back I can get some real crazy comments and um there was a one that uh a person asked um they found it unusual that if people with chronic illness or chronic pain or fibro don't want keep saying they don't want pity why do we talk about it so much and why is it in our usernames a lot and I thought this was like really important to address and yes I'm going way off topic because I literally can't talk about this anymore um, unless you guys just want to like see me snot the whole rest of this video um, but I had to really think about it um, because I had to put myself in somebody else's shoes because it isn't something I talk about a lot in just like my daily life um, but here on YouTube why was I talking about it and why were others why do I think others were talking about it and why did she feel that watching one of my videos was trying to incite pity because there are some people with chronic illnesses that do want pity that's just my personal thing and a lot of the people I've met don't want pity um, but I finally came down to well a lot of times when I have comments that kind of I don't really know how to answer them I just kind of let whatever speaks me speak and it really came down to me letting the person know that there's a huge difference between support and pity I mean that's like heaven and hell like night and day they are so different and we use it in our usernames and talk about it and are parts of fibro groups or chronic pain or chronic illness groups and that's because no matter how much we don't want to think this it is part of who we are and it's part of how we deal with our lives it is it's something that forces us to change our lives and if you don't a lot of times you can get much sicker and so and you may say like yeah I have a chronic illness and I do exactly the same thing I did before 
and that's your opinion and I respect that but I would probably say you might do the same things but you do them differently and you come to cope with things differently whether you know you're doing it or consciously doing it or not um, but I, I mean I even say this about people with less severe forms of fibro um, or less less just less severe fibro period um, it still impacts your life it still impacts your family it still impacts the people around you um, so it is just something we have to talk about because it's just about talking it's like if I went around and didn't talk about being a female like it's just part of who I am like I don't know or like do you talk about to your friends when you have cavities like it's just something that's happening in your life and if I'm in a lot of pain that day I'm gonna talk about it do I want you to be like oh you poor thing like no I don't want that but in some circumstances I do want you know my friends to say like I'm really sorry you're going through that like that really sucks is there anything I can do that's not pity that's support and a lot of times we put it in our YouTube names because we're trying to spread awareness because I'll just put this out here I didn't much care about fibro I didn't know what fibro was I didn't much care about what other people were going through what other people were experiencing at that time um, and I was just doing my thing and then this happened to me and then all of a sudden it was like okay I have to learn about this because I was ignorant to it and then I felt an obligation to talk to other people about it because I had such wonderful people in my life so because of that because one the biggest question I get is how do you get support from your friends and family pretty much that's what all the different questions that I get boil down to and I think that's a huge huge part of why we put it out there and we put it in our name and why my project was called my life with chronic pain is because that's the first thing I had to deal with each day and everything that goes into my day has to do with that now am I like every day I'm waking up like depressed that I have this no but some days yeah it freaking sucks and um I don't expect my friends and family to support me. Is it frustrating? Does it make me angry sometimes when they don't? Yeah, but it's not something I expect because I was ignorant to it. So I do feel like it's a 50-50 thing. And a lot of times speaking about my own experience helps other people talk to friends and family or be that friend and family that can support someone because a lot of people don't understand that it's a really an area that don't people don't really talk that much about like how how do I talk to my friend that's sick every single day for the foreseeable future that's a huge question and that's really difficult and there are a lot of people including myself that wouldn't necessarily be able to be friends with someone that is chronically ill and that's just me being completely honest um, but now that I am, I can sympathize and empathize with that. But before that, I don't know, I don't know if I could, I, I know, I know I could have, but I don't think I could have been friends with myself because I am still turning, learning how to talk about it with friends and family and things like that. Like if I'm sick to the point where I'm crying, I don't call my friends and so they don't really know what's going on and that puts them in a, a um a hard situation like it's just one of those things that like if you're talking about it and letting people know what's going on with you they can't jump to their own conclusions and i would jump to my own conclusions just because that's a really big flaw of mine so if I was friends with myself and I kept canceling five minutes before we did things, I would just assume that myself hates myself and doesn't want to be friends and is kind of a really sucky friend and things like that. So I just thought I would talk about that because I thought it was really interesting and 
that I came up with something because I wonder if other people in this kind of community get that question a lot and there is a huge difference between pity and support and um, so I just wanted to talk about that. Other than that, I'm stuck in Florida until my dad comes back to pick me up. It's very stressful because I have got an extension of one month for my doctor already. So he will absolutely not give me any more medication. And I have, mm, I have made a month's worth of pain pills last probably four months. So that's really stressful and really hard and feels very much like it is with just suffering for no reason. But um, yeah, I don't have the money to just go out and pay a fee to see a doctor and get blood work done to just get this painkiller. So, um, so I'm sick a lot and I... I'm dealing with grief and it's manifesting in my fibro a lot. Um, so I just wanted to update you guys and let you guys know what's happening. Um, for those of you that are really close friends with me here, um, I've already heard from all of you guys and I appreciate that so much. Like I can't, I saying I appreciate it doesn't even do it justice. I don't have the words to say how much it means to me. So, um, but I hope you guys are having a much, much better time. I would love in the comments down below if you would give me a little update of what's going on with you because even though you guys have messaged me and things like that, I haven't heard what's going on with you and I would absolutely love to hear that. So um, I hope you guys are having a pain-free, stress-free day. Um, I love you guys so much and as always, mm,